Hola, hola, my friends, my family. It is Evangelist Cal with Second Baptist Church. We are here live on Facebook. It is Saturday, November 30th, and it is about mm, 5.36 p.m. Central Standard Time. So thank you for joining me live here um, on Facebook on this last day of November. My goodness, can you guys believe it? Uh, we are here, final day of the month. And I wanted to just drop a quick little encouragement on this on this Saturday, on this weekend, to carry you on through for the rest of the weekend. But let me not be remiss in saying, again, Evangelist Cal, Second Baptist Church, our brick and mortar location, we are located in Joliet, Illinois, 156 South Joliet Street. Every Sunday morning we have services and we want to welcome anybody who is willing and able to come and join us on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. That means tomorrow if you happen to be catching this live and you happen to be local to the Joliet area, please feel free to join us. We would love to have you. Our pastor is Larry Tyler and um, he loves to, to give you a handshake and a hug to welcome you uh, for and thank you for visiting if you indeed are a visitor. So all also, if you do come to Second Baptist as a result of seeing this video, let us know. Again, our pastor at the end of service, he's at the door greeting all of our, um, or technically saying goodbye, <laughs> to all of the, uh, the congregants and the visitors. So we would love to hear, hey, Pastor, I actually came and visited as a result of the Facebook Live uh, broadcast that went on last night or any of the other ones that you may have seen uh, throughout over the last couple of years. So we definitely, definitely welcome you. Do you feel welcome if you're a visitor? Do you feel welcome? <laughs> Please come out and see us. All right. So listen, 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 listen. I got a good one tonight. Got a good one tonight because... Um, a lot of us need encouragement in this area, I believe. You know, myself included, not just you, but me too. We all need encouragement. We all need a word. We all need to be reminded that we can overcome. Yes, you can overcome. Yes, I can overcome. Yes, we can overcome. We all can overcome, y'all. Do y'all believe that? I want us to know that we were built to overcome. We were born to overcome. We were made to overcome. Now there's a few scriptures that I'm going to highlight to kind of bring this home for us to, to receive the revelation that we are built and, and ready, willing to overcome anything that we may be going through, anything that we may be facing, any tribulation that may be trying us right now. Please know that we can overcome. So again, I'm going to highlight three scriptures and I'm going to hit it and quit it and let you guys enjoy your weekend and hopefully this will add to the enjoyment of your weekend knowing that you can overcome. Welcome to the live viewers that are just joining us just now. Hi, hey everybody, hey, hey, hey. Hey, don't forget, share the message too as it's going forward. We're just getting started. So it's a good time now to hit that share button, letting uh, others know, letting your followers know that it's going down right here on Facebook Live on the Second Baptist Facebook page. All right, you can overcome. You can overcome. So here we go. We're going to come from the book of 1 John. We're going to be on the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. And we're going to read from the New King James Version for this scripture. Again, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says this. You, all right, listen to this, listen to this now. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Ah, did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? He said, he's talking to us saying, you are of God, little children, calling us his children. And, and, and we have overcome them. Now, who's them? Them is anything that is not like God. Because prior to these scripture, God, uh, uh, it, 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 they're talking about the Antichrist. OK, and talking about overcoming that. All right. So those things that are not like God, we have overcome them because he, Jesus, God, who is in us is greater than he, Satan, who is in the world. All right. Y'all got that. So who is he? Who is he? Who is the he that is in us? Who is the he that is operating in us day after day, moment after moment? Who is that? That is God. Yeah, yeah, that is God. And he is the one who created heaven and the earth. Now, if we really took time, <laughs> and I don't think we have enough in this lifetime to really think about that, think and, 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 and meditate on the fact that the power of God, the one 
who created the heavens and the earth. He's all powerful, y'all. <laughs> He's all everything, y'all. That power is in us. Amen. That power is in us and allows us to be able to overcome. When I said we're built to overcome, come on now. <laughs> we are built to overcome. The spirit of God lives within us. The same one that created the heavens and the earth, created everything good, lives in us. So we have the authority and the power to overcome. Who else, who else is he? Uh, he's the one who raised Christ from the dead. Now, again, thinking about that, if we had enough time to meditate upon that, we're talking about someone that was in the grave, in the tomb. God raised that man. Amen. Raised him from the dead. That's resurrection power that lives in us. Yeah, we have that power living in us, giving us that authority, that power to overcome. We're built for it. We're built for it. We were made to overcome. Why? Because greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is nothing that can overcome the power of God. Do y'all get that? There is nothing that can overcome the power of God. Yes, yeah, society may have you thinking otherwise. The devil may have you trying to think otherwise. But no, God is all powerful. He is all powerful. So, so we were built to come, overcome because greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. All right, moving on. Next scripture that we're going to look at, John. We're going to go to John 16, again out of the New King James Version. And it says this, these things... I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. This is Jesus talking. I like this. Let me say it again. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. This is what Jesus is telling us. But be of good cheer. I like that. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Mm, 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 mm. So he wants us to have that peace. Jesus wants us to have that peace and he alerts us. He alarms us. He warns us. He tells us straight up in this world. Yeah, there's going to be some trouble. There's going to be some trials that come along. There's going to be some situations that come along. That's not going to be pleasing to our senses. There's going to be some stuff that goes down. There's going to be some things that are happening. God, I mean, he'd be plain and simple. He said it. It's going to happen. Why? Because we're in a fallen world. But what else did he say? But I want you to be of good cheer nonetheless. Why? Because that's not the end. He said, because I have overcome the world. Ah, we're built to overcome, y'all. We're built to overcome because we got to think about it. How do we handle our tribulations when they come? How do we handle our tribulations when they come? Do we have peace in the midst of our tribulations? Do we? Yeah, I mean, I, hey, truth be told. It's tough sometimes to have peace in every situation when the, when the trials come, but, but Jesus calls for us to do it. <laughs> so it's possible. He calls for us to do it. So it's not impossible to have peace. Why? Because if we keep our minds stayed on him, he will keep us in perfect peace, even through the trials, even during the trials. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Cause that's what he told us to do that. You may have peace because he has overcome the world. So it's important to, um, to really assess how we handle our tribulations. Are we flipping out or are we doing what Jesus says right here? Be of good cheer. Yeah, we're not necessarily happy about the trial. Well, you know, who's excited to be going through a trial or a situation that's tough? No one's excited about that. But because we have the hope, <laughs> yeah, because we have the hope in Jesus that he has overcome the world, the trial doesn't affect us as deeply as those who don't have Jesus, who don't have that hope. Yeah, because we have hope in Jesus. We have hope in Jesus. And, and when we're dealing with trials, do we believe that God can and will bring us out and bring us through? It's important for us to have that vision. We have to have a vision of the end and not just where we are at the moment. That makes a world of difference. Our vision makes a world of difference. So that's why Jesus put it this way, I believe. He said, you know, like I said, he warned us. He said, look now, you're going to have trouble in this world, but I want you to be of good cheer because that's not the end. The vision is I have overcome the world. That's the vision. So once we set our eyes on him, we set our eyes on the final destination, the where we are, the, 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 where, the where we're at in the journey, 
you know, how we're going along in the journey is not so treacherous when we know that we're going to have the victory in the end anyhow. Ah, uh, can I get an amen from somebody on that note? Yes, we got to have that vision. We got to be able to see the end from the beginning. Yeah, it's not looking pretty right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, that thing that you're going through, nope, it ain't looking pretty right now. But you know, Jesus, God has brought you out plenty of times before. Same God that was back then is the same one now working the situation. So we got to believe it and we got to have that vision of it being worked out. We have to have that vision of God bringing us through the situation, no matter what the situation looks like right now. Y'all know, come on now. We, 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 we don't, we're not sight people. We're faith people, which brings me to my next scripture, my final one. And I'm gonna let y'all go for tonight. Coming out of first John. Yeah. All the Johns are good. We're in first John and then we're in John and now we're back in first John. First John chapter five, verse four says this for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Yes. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. I love it. I love it. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That's us. Are we not born again? We are not born again. Yes. So we are born of him. We overcome the world. That's what the scripture says. Plain and simple. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Mm, it's our faith that overcomes the world. It's our faith that overcomes the tribulation. It's our faith that overcomes the trial. It's our faith that overcomes the circumstance. So let's check ourselves. How is our faith? How is our faith? Yeah, our faith gets tested frequently. And the only reason it continues to get tested frequently is because God is trying to grow it. He's trying to increase it. And sometimes we got to pray. Like Peter said, oh God, Increase my faith, huh? Sometimes we can't, we, ooh, ooh, ooh. some of these situations come upon us. It's like, man, look now, I don't, mm, I don't know about this, but it's our faith that is being tested and it's our faith that overcomes the world. We must believe God at his word and without a doubt, without wavering, without what I just said that we do sometimes, like, uh, I don't know about this. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we do that because we're human, obviously, but we have to get to a point into a place where it's like, man, look, God got this. God has got this. I don't know what the end's going to be, but I know whatever it is, my steps are ordered. <laughs> my steps are ordered and it's going to work out for my good, regardless of what it looks like right now. That's the type of faith that we have to stand on, no matter what it is that we go through. That's the type of faith that we need to overcome because that's what the scripture says. It's our faith that overcomes the world. It's our faith. That, that lies, that's our, that's our responsibility. Our faith, that's our responsibility. Let me tell you this, God gave it to us. We have the faith. You know, some people say, well, I ain't got no faith. Yeah, you do. If you're born again, you have some faith. There's a seed of faith in there. Now it's time to grow it. And how it grows is through tests. How it grows is through trials and how we respond to those things. Amen. So we all got it. Now we just have to grow it and we have to trust him through experience. Exactly what I'm talking about. The faith has to grow. So we're going to have to experience some things to be able to testify <laughs> that God does come through, that God does deliver, that he is a man of his word. I don't have to doubt him. Yes, that comes through experience. It comes through experience. And yes, sometimes the experiences aren't fun. <laughs> They're nothing we look forward to. We don't want nothing to do with the experience. Can't we just have the faith and, and no experience? No, <laughs> we have to experience some things in order for that faith to grow. Yes. So, so think it not strange. Scripture tells us as well. Thinking Peter, don't think it's strange when we come and, uh, you know, come across trials and tribulations because they're there to help build our patience and, and, and to build us and to build us in him and in our faith. So don't think it's strange. Of course, I mean, I don't expect you to be, you know, throwing a party, but know in your heart and knowing God that he has it and that we're, we're built to overcome. That's the bottom line that we're built to overcome. So in closing, in closing, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is that you are going through right now tonight, 
And even if you're not going through nothing right now, praise the Lord for it. Hallelujah. From glory to glory to glory. There will be a trial coming along the way. I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news. I'm just teaching what the word says. Actually, you know, scripture says tribulation will come. So whatever it is you are going through or whatever it is you may be going through later on. Because now you got this preemptive message <laughs> to quash any doubts. Know that you are built to overcome. We just have to believe in who he is in us. We got to believe in who he is in us. He's a great God, y'all. He's a mighty God. And we have to have that faith with that, that, that does not waver. That does not waver. We got to have that faith that does not waver. And we got to make sure that when we're going through the trial, that, that we're a good cheer because of our vision. Because of our vision of God bringing us through it. The end. <laughs> the end is him. And all things work together for your good because you love God. And you're called according to his purpose. Is that not right? So you got to stand on that thing. You got to stand on that thing. But all in all, you and I, we are built. We are made to overcome. Amen. God bless you. I pray that this has been an encouragement unto your spirit. Please share the message. Someone else needs to be encouraged to know that they can overcome too. So share the message. And again, I invite you to our Sunday morning services. Actually, it's Saturday now, the 30th of November. So if you happen to be catching this anytime prior to tomorrow, December 1st, my Lord. <laughs> if you happen to be catching this prior to December 1st, 2019, you are welcome to visit us at Second Baptist Church located at 156 South Joliet Street in Joliet, Illinois, where our pastor is Larry Tyler at 1030 a.m. on Sunday. Yes, we appreciate you. We love you to come out and visit with us if you happen to not be a member watching this tonight. All right. Love you all with the love of Christ. And again, I hope you are encouraged to know, to know, to know, to know that you know that you can overcome. God bless you.